No chit chatting. We got stuff to do. And my battery's almost dead. So let's do this. Larry Smith episode 26. We're gonna do a lamb's tongue. We've got a client. I shared it on Instagram. Everybody really responded to it. And some questions came up about the tooling and the layout and how I came about doing it. So this episode, I'm not gonna talk a lot about what's going on with Dirty Smith and stuff. We're just gonna get straight to the tutorial. And yeah, so enjoy the show. Now this is actually for a client. And the way that this layout had to work was that I had a 10 inch tread so I have a 10 inch tread post is going to mount on the riser after this 10 inch tread I don't have a place to mount down here otherwise I would and this lamb's tongue which would be much smaller over here so code I'm dealing with is grip rail and this could be different this could be a C shape this could be whatever you wanted but this needs to come down and be attractive and the client liked that lamb's tongue look. So we have this bend here and then we have another bend down here. Because we have 10 inches but we want to keep things proportional as well. And a lot of that's going to come with experience and budget. You know what are they willing to give you to do. So in this situation, I went and got different jigs we have and found a radius I thought was nice and found a smaller one. And so literally drew out a circle right here and I drew out a circle right in here and then just freehanded it in. So I had a 90, I had my 10 inches I needed to clear and based off of my notes I knew where this next tread was going to be so how high to set my next tread. And then we have bending forks. So this is one set of bending forks. We have other bending forks. These are smaller. These are made out of greater blade. These are mild steel. You see like this one's bent a little bit. But these are basically your hands. You know you're reaching into places and you can torque and you can turn. Get in tight little places, little material to get in there. If uh, you need more torque, you can add a pipe on the back of this to really get on it. But it is a tool that I think gets overlooked on what you can do and how to use them. Sometimes you'll see bending forks similar to this. Again, this is a tool steel. I believe this is greater blade. And I have different shapes and sizes. And they're designed to go in the vise. At which you put material in and you can torque it and you can bend it. They also work well with other bending forks. So you can put material in there and then you can grab that and you know, bend stuff around. These can be intimidating because we're dealing with tool steel. Finding tool steel might be a challenge. This guy, you will get very far if you make one of these. This is just angle iron. This is 5 8 round. It's not even tool steel fabbed it together, welded it in there. You make a partner, so you make two of them that go together. And they complement each other. And you can put these in the vise, so how this works, put it in the vise, in the vise, put it about where you want. I try to keep these in the center, I don't try to put them offside, so in the center. And when you put pressure on them, all this surface area that you added is structure and they compress and they work against each other. So when, in, when you're in here torquing, this bar here is pushing against this. Same thing going on and it really becomes part of the vise. And if you need to change that, you just loosen it up and you can change it. I mean, you can go all the way together. Depending on the size of your vise, you get pretty far apart. This is a great tool. I think anybody who works with metal should have a set of these. They're easy to make. If you break one, you can easily make another one. They're very diverse. Doing these, I want everything to be proportional. So I'm figuring out, you know, if this thickness stayed the same, 
obviously the tip we don't want that to stay the same either so you can get these travelers off of eBay antique stores sometimes string is fine but I wanted to find out from this point to where I thought the taper should start about this point how long is that distance and you can simply take a piece of string you're going center line and then come back to it and see you know we're pretty close to 12 inches and then using the piece of string you know get an idea about how long does your taper need to be and in this case we're right around about 10 inches for a taper so the first thing I need to do is whatever material I'm using could be this cap you could forge material at a square bar for a cap if you wanted on this situation I'm going to use a power hammer and I don't want that to be discouraging with anyone who doesn't have a power hammer you don't have to use it I'm just using it for time and efficiency I'm going to draw out my taper and then I'm going to start this scroll end like we did in uh, on the episode intro to scrolls same technique and I'm going to start that check it here and once I have that I'm going to measure my 12 inches back I'll put it on the table I'm going to weld this piece of tubing here and I'm going to clamp my piece to it so I use that for support and then using the bending forks we'll come around and start turning this and twisting it. And if I need more material, I can simply push this forward, grab more material, and keep coming around the corner. So don't hesitate to change how you work when you're in the middle of this. If, I find, if you find out you need more than 12, scoot it forward, grab the material, and keep on working. Don't stop. I try to get these lamb's tongues done in one heat. Two heats maybe, but one heat is ideal. my tongs. Okay, so I measured off 12 inches and I marked it on the edge of my table. I'm using that 12 inch mark on my layout since I've already figured out how much material we need. Using these guys, you can start bringing it around. So I'm going to be following my path as I'm coming in here. And it's bending faster up here, so I'm going to back it up here. I'm going to use this to torque. And you can control where and how fast these guys bend. And some of it's intuition. And then we do enough of these. You know how to how to get where you want to go. This one I want to open up. And 
bend it in even more. I'm pretty close. So I welded my stop here because I didn't want to go past this mark. Now here's my original line. Come forward a little bit more. And then I'm pressing against this, I'm torquing against this, and I can use this stop point. But I like that. We got a nice figure going on here. You know, it's attractive. And not only that, if someone happens to grab this post, is right here. That's where the post is at. And since we're covering a large tread, I need to be able to meet code on the edge of the tread, meet the post where the post is going to be so it can continue going up the staircase. So it's more of a bending exercise. And if you find out that you need more or less, an air compressor.